Headline. Ethiopia makes more than half a billion dollars in the past five months from coffee exports. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Yamsaron Dumtaka from African Rinse and Television Services with tonight's news. Stay tuned. Ethiopia makes more than half a billion dollars from coffee exports. It was announced that more than $615 million was earned from coffee exports in the past five months. The amount gained now is more than $100 million compared to the amount made in the same period last year. Khalib Tintai has more details. On Tuesday, the Ethiopian Coffee and Tea Authority announced that over the past five months, coffee products exported to the foreign market earned more than $650 million. According to Shafi Umar, Deputy Director General and Head of Marketing Statement to the Ethiopian News Agency, more than 109,000 tons have been exported to the foreign market in the last five months. The Deputy Director pointed out that Germany, Saudi Arabia, Belgium, Australia and Japan are among the countries where the coffee products are sent. Deputy Director added that by expanding the market destinations, they have started exporting coffee to China and Indonesia this year, which contributed significantly to the increase in income. He also stated that plans are being made to earn up to $2 billion by exporting 360,000 tons of coffee in this fiscal year. Last year, $1.4 billion was earned by exporting 302,000 tons of coffee to the foreign market. It is also known that Ethiopia has been increasing its income by exporting a large amount of coffee in the last four years through improvements in the sector. The textile industry is expected to contribute more to Ethiopia's economy. Textile companies operating in Awasa Industrial Park express optimism with the outcome of the Pretoria Peace Agreement in boosting Ethiopia's economy. Kalib Tinsai has more details. CEO Su's companies based in Hawasa Industrial Park gave an interview to Ethiopian news agency in which they expressed their readiness to benefit from the windfall of the Pretoria Peace Agreement. Gopal Krishna, CEO for Silver Spark Textile Company that currently has more than 2,700 employees under it, said the following. So one thing I want to say this, say that garmenting is the future. Ethiopia, I can see a big future uh, in garmenting. Because now, as I told you, labor force is there, plus they are quick learner. Hawasa Industry Park CEO Mr. Matteo Sashanafi for his part stated that the peace agreement has created an optimism with industries that operate from the park by expanding their operation in their market reach to Asia, Europe and North America. He also stated other foreign companies have shown interest in working in Ethiopia's industrial parks. 24 companies operate out of Hawasa Industrial Park with more than 28,000 jobs created according to the park's administration. The Commercial Bank of Ethiopia resumed services in parts of Tigray. Yesterday, the Commercial Bank of Ethiopia announced that it has started services in Shira, Alamata and Quorum cities. Following the recent peace agreement, the bank has announced that it has started offering remittance and deposit services at its branches located in Shira, Alamata and Quorum city. The Commercial Bank of Ethiopia said that they will continue their efforts to please their customers by expanding their services and launching services at all branches as conditions permit. The Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition celebrates its 20th year in Ethiopia. The Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition celebrated its 20th year anniversary yesterday in Hyatt Regency. GAIN has been working towards improving nutrition around the world and Ethiopia as well. Khalib Tintai has more details. The Global Alliance for Food Nutrition, an organization launched in 2002 to tackle human suffering caused by malnutrition, celebrated its 20 years of service in Hyatt Regency Hotel in an event organized by its Ethiopian country office team. The event was attended by various partners of the organization from the government and other NGOs. Former Prime Minister Haile Mariam Dasaleng attended the event representing African Green Revolution Forum, which he is currently a chairperson of. Dr. Dereja Duguma, State Minister for Ethiopian Health Ministry, was also at the event. GAIN, or Global Alliance for Food Nutrition, showcased its achievement and collaboration work in a gallery walk beside the celebration. The organization showcased its focused work on meeting the 2030 UN Social Development Goals with regards to food security, improving nutrition, and minimizing post-harvest losses. Keynote speeches were given by the guest partners while GAIN's executive director joined the celebration via video call and addressed those present to thank them for the work done in their partnership. The event concluded with a cake-cutting ceremony. Now on to news from abroad. The Taliban has banned women from attending universities. The Taliban have banned women from universities in Afghanistan. This has brought on an outrage and condemnation among the young people of the country. Khalib Tinsai has more details. 
The Minister of Higher Education announced this unthinkable decision on Tuesday, saying it would take effect immediately. This ban further places a heavy constraint on women's education as girls have been banned from secondary school already since the Taliban has come to power. Even though some women staged protests in the capital Kabul on Wednesday, it was quickly squashed by the Taliban officials. The United Nations in several countries have condemned the order which takes Afghanistan back to the Taliban's first period of rule when girls could not receive formal education. The UN Special Reporter to Afghanistan said it was a new law further violating the rights to equal education and deepens the erasure of women from Afghan society. North Korea condemns Japan's attempt to revamp their military. North Korea shows an acceptance towards Japan's planned military buildup and plunged action and condemns it by saying that it was the wrong and dangerous choice that Tokyo has made. Caleb Tinsai has more on the matter. North Korea's foreign ministry made a statement just days after Japan unveiled their new $320 billion security strategy that outlined plans for Japan's military to mount counter-strike capabilities and to respond to the threats posed by China, Russia, and North Korea. In their statement, the spokesperson said that Japan's move to realize unjust and excessive ambition will result in North Korea showing how concerned and displeased they are with practical action. North Korea also turned to the West to put blame on the U.S. for encouraging Japan's rearmament and reinvasion plan. The United States of America flies bomber jets near South Korea. In a show of arms that has been taken up by the United States and North Korea, the United States flew its nuclear-capable B-52 bomber jets near South Korea. Kalip Tinsai has more on the matter. In response to the ballistic missile test from North Korea, the U.S. flew B-52 nuclear-capable bomber jets near South Korea. The flight is said to demonstrate its ability to counter a possible threat from North Korea. The U.S. also reportedly flew F-22 stealth fighter jets. South Korea, on the other hand, participated in the exercise with its F-35A and F-15K fighter jets, the country's Ministry of Defense announced. The two countries agreed last month to step up military exercises and increase the number of U.S.-provided equipments and jets as well as for the U.S. to make good on its pledge to defend South Korea. The Ministry of Defense of South Korea, referring to that accord, said that the two allies would continue to demonstrate their defense capabilities to respond to North Korea's nuclear and missile threats. North Korea has been conducting multiple missile launches this year alone, and just days ago it launched two medium-range ballistic missiles. These were all the news we had for you for tonight. Once again, I'm Yopsara Ondem from African Intelligence Services. Thank you for watching.